Hi, do you or someone you love have dementia or Alzheimer's? Do you worry about losing your own memory? What if I told you there's research that shows an already FDA approved drug, though not specifically approved for dementia, is helping reverse symptoms of Alzheimer's? My name is Wendy Selvig. This is my first YouTube channel and first real published show. <laughs> Thank you for your grace. I've been told your first one's always awful and you always look back and dislike it later. That may be true, but my goal is to just be authentic with you and to share amazing alternative options I've discovered over my 20 years of research working for a nonprofit organization that focuses on natural health. The organization I've worked for has been involved in supplying health specific research and nutrition programs to orphanages and communities in third world countries. I've spent many years researching solutions for people's health. People who were told there's no answers. Well, I'm an optimist. Whenever there's no answers, I feel we are not looking hard enough. The world is big enough. Someone out there has tried something that may offer hope. We just need to connect people to the information. So now in this age of information and technology, which is amazing, hello YouTube, the ability to find specific information is easier than ever. Today, we're gonna discuss research related to Alzheimer's and dementia and a possible solution that could help memory impairment. It's not a cure, but it may help, and it has helped my mom who does have Alzheimer's. So, are you ready to learn? Let's dig in. Now, I do have to say, I don't want you to think I'm treating or prescribing. I'm not, I am not a doctor. I'm simply a layman researcher. I'm putting out information so that you can research on your own and then talk to your own doctor about what's right for you. My purposes are informational, educational, and for entertainment. This topic in particular though is exciting to me because my mom has been diagnosed with Alzheimer's and we've used what I'm about to show you and seen really amazing results. And I just, I honestly have so much hope for people. Um, and I can't wait to share this. So hold on. We are going to discuss this actual FDA approved drug, though, again, like I said, not approved for dementia, but it's called methylene blue. It's over the counter. It's available on Amazon. It's pretty easy to take and it's being looked at and studied for its possible effects um, for those with Alzheimer's. Now, not everyone should take it. So please hang around long enough to hear the details and the risks before you run off and buy it. Um, it can be fatal in some instances, all right? So my mom, Carrie, was born in 1935. She's gonna turn 89 next month. She's officially was a diagnosed with Alzheimer's a few years ago. Her symptoms include significant short-term memory loss, conversations from five minutes ago are forgotten, confused facts and stories, occasionally not recognizing even me or my kids, um, and she looks at this. So she also has withdrawn from social engagement, not wanting to socialize. Now, if you have someone you love with this, this disease, it can really be difficult. I, I hate this disease. When people lose access to their memories and their life stories, it is really hard. Now, her doctor says there's no cure and no drugs that really can help, except for maybe mood altering drugs if we needed them. He's a wonderful doctor. And for the first year and a half that she lived with me, she declined significantly. But for the last six months, six months, we have watched her improve. She has been taking methylene blue, and I'd say for the last two months of those six, she hasn't had any instances of not recognizing me or family members. She hasn't told any fact confusing stories, and she's shown signs of boredom, of looking for things to do, wanting to interact with people. Um, she's come out of her room and offered to wash dishes <laughs> and do laundry because she's bored. Her doctor agrees that these are all tremendous signs of improvement, right? Okay, so the biggest shock, however, was two weeks ago when a nurse came out to check on my mom. Every year a nurse comes out to give a test to determine her rate of decline, right? So last year when they asked her who the president was, she said Woodrow Wilson. Well, this year, when they asked her who the president was, just out popped from her mouth, Joe Biden. <laughs> I mean, my eyes went, I was like, what, what? I was totally expecting her not to get it. So she, she just knew it and remembered it. And that was an amazing, amazing 
revelation that she was doing so much better. So now regarding the research, there are quite a few scientific publications that explain how methylene blue works in the brain. It untangles the neurofibrillary tangles. It helps strengthen the structure that holds the communication tubules for neurons to transport. Without it, the structure collapses and the tubules fall apart, and there's no pathway for memory to be retrieved. Um, this is the simplest and, and quickest way, though not technically correct medically, to explain it. Um, but for my mom, about six months ago, we started putting 20 drops a day in her water bottle, and she would drink that over several hours during the day. Now, Alzheimer's is characterized by these neurofibrillary tangles, but also amyloid beta plaques, and something called a tau oligomer. The methylene blue doesn't appear to improve those things, so it is not a complete cure, but it does support the structure that forms the pathways of communication, which is a huge deal. After six months of taking it, my mom seems to have reversed back to what I'd say would be about two years. Um, so uh, imagine this, imagine, imagine a water slide being the communication pathway, right? electrical impulses traveling along the water slide in your brain. I know this is elementary, please bear with me. Uh, but then imagine the structural support system, all those gray bars holding up the water slide. In Alzheimer's, the gray bars can't stand and they collapse into tangles of pieces of the slide and the communication pathway falls to the ground. The methylene blue comes in and strengthens that support structure, keeping the communication pathway working. With my mom, the communication pathways were collapsing. And now there's evidence um, that they are there. For my mom's personal testimony, I'd say the methylene blue is definitely working. And she still has memory issues, which is characteristic of still having plaques and issues she's not cured. And I'm not fully expecting that. But her quality of life has gotten better with the methylene blue. And because of her memory loss, I have to be there to make sure she takes it every day. So that's just a note for caregivers. If you have somebody you're helping, don't give them a bottle of methylene blue and say, take it every day. You gotta make sure they take it. Um, but I don't know how long this is gonna last. I don't know if she'll get better or if she'll get worse. I do know we've improved the quality of life for the past six months and reversed the direction she had been going. So it was going down, it's reversed and gone back up. As a side note, I had some genetic testing done for my mom. Um, by a genetics doctor. And when I get all those results back and um, we've tried what he's recommended, I'm gonna also do a video to share that with you as well. He said there's one or two genetic errors she has that has caused the dementia and he can help improve her memory by directing us to some specific supplements. And he quoted up to a 90% improvement was possible. So maybe we can continue that scope with the combined methylene blue and the genetic testing results. So I will keep you all posted on that. Um, so let's just go over methylene blue really quickly, summarize it. It is a synthetic dye. It's been used in medicine for over a century. The first time it was recorded as used was for malaria in 1891. It's a salt used as a dye and as a medication. It's considered a synthetic drug. You do have to be careful with it. Um, it's also FDA approved for the treatment of acquired methemoglobinemia. It's a hard word to say. Um, what is that, you say? Well, it's a, bless, a blood disorder that prevents oxygen from reaching your cells. Uh, the relationship between methylene blue and Alzheimer's has recently attracted increasing scientific attention. This is all great. And it's been shown to reduce the formation of amyloid plaques and neurofibrillary tangles and partial repair of impairments in mitochondrial function and cellular metabolism. Um, I have research I will cite below and you can read it all. Um, I will reference everything I've talked about. I'll have it linked below. Okay. Now, methylene blue is on the World Health Organization's list of essential medicines. This means it's considered to be one of the most effective and safe to meet the most important needs in a health system. It's also been used as a malaria treatment, carbon monoxide poisoning, and cyanide poisoning. Anti it's used as an antidepressant and for methemoglobinemia, which I just got the word right. <laughs> Research shows it also may be used for oral cancer and viral inactivation. Again, if you're interested in that, I'm putting all the research below. So methylene blue kind of seems like a wonder drug. So in all fairness, let's look at some of the negative implications of using methylene blue and some of the risks. This is all really important to know. If you're thinking about using it, you need to know these risks. Um, 
And first of all, I would like to say methylene blue has something toxicologists call hormesis. Hormesis refers to the agent having a beneficial effect at low doses and a detrimental effect at higher doses. So less is more really when it comes to methylene blue. While methylene blue has shown promising potential in various applications, it's important to be aware of potential side effects. Like any compound, it may interact differently with individuals based on their unique physiology. Common side effects, let's talk about those. Blue discoloration of urine or skin, and I'm taking it so I can attest to this, peeing blue is very weird. Um, some people reported nausea or gastrointestinal um, discomfort. I haven't, I haven't experienced that. Um, allergic reactions, if you're allergic, you're, you might have a reaction. Um, serotonin syndrome is something that if you have that, um, that this is something you wanna stay away from because it can increase that. You probably know if you have serotonin syndrome, but this can also interact with medications and create it. So just really ask your doctor if you're on medications, just run it by him real quick. Hey, can I take methylene blue? Will it interact with my medication? Um, one more side effect would be signs of hemolytic anemia, which could produce jaundice, dark colored urine, fever, weakness, dizziness. Um, these, if this happened, you need prompt medical attention, but you probably already know if you have it because um, it can be genetic, but it also can come on with autoimmune disorders, infections, medications. Again, mostly we're looking at med medicines that interact with methylene blue. So again, ask your doctor, really, truly. If you're on drugs of any kind, <laughs> ask your doctor. We should just ask your doctor anyway. Methylene blue should specifically not be taken with the medication called Dapsone, and it's not recommended for patients with renal disease or patients with hypersensitive uh, sensitivity to methylene blue. It's not recommended for pregnancy. Just ask your doctor. Ask your doctor before taking methylene blue, especially if you're on other medications. Okay, back to hormesis, because I want to talk about cancer. Back to hormesis where it's beneficial in low doses, but not in high. Low dose methylene blue substitutes electrons that are normally derived by oxygen and thus drive the electron transport chain and cause mitochondria to work more efficiently and reduce oxidative stress. However, methylene blue at high doses can take electrons away from the protein complexes of the electron transport chain, which decreases mitochondrial efficiency and ATP production. So less is more. When it comes to cancer, there are studies that show methylene blue can disrupt mitochondrial function in cancer cells, leading to cancer cell death. Yet, researchers also did a two-year study in mice and rats to see if methylene blue could potentially cause cancer. In the mouse study, there were no statistically significant findings related to tumors or cancers. So that was their conclusion of that study. It did not statistically relate to tumors or cancer over a two-year period. However, in the rat study, not mice, the rat, methylene blue led to the development of some pancreatic cancer in some male rats. The rat study indicated a potential link between methylene blue and pancreatic tumors, and the dose of methylene blue seemed to influence these effects as well as some of the rats got very high doses of methylene blue. So possibly similar to other issues, lesser dose is better, better outcome. Um, there is a potential risk, however, long-term, maybe high, higher doses of risk for pancreatic cancer. So this is something to talk to your doctor about and if you are willing to take that risk. Okay, we're, we're closing it up here soon, but what about dosing? What is too much? According to several sources, which I will put down below, the safe oral dosing range for methylene blue is typically 0.5 to four milligrams per kilogram of body weight per day with doses above five milligram considered potentially toxic. So for you Americans trying to make that quick conversion, one kilogram is 2.2 pounds. If you weighed 100 pounds, the safe oral dose range would be 23 milligrams to 181 milligrams per day. Remember, with methylene blue, dose is important, more is not better. Doses above five milligram per kilogram are considered potentially toxic and should be avoided. The common therapeutic oral dose um, that I found online recommended by a pharmacy is typically 10 to 30 milligrams per day. Um, however, proper dosing needs to be determined by your healthcare provider and for each individual patient's circumstances. 
my mom's been taking a very low dose. The brand we chose, Earth Harmony, one dropper full equals 20 drops, which contains 10 milligrams. Now, I don't specifically recommend any brand over the other. I don't have a relationship with one of the companies. I'm not a brand ambassador, nothing like that. I just looked at all the different options and I chose Earth Harmony um, because of their claims. Their claim to be USP uh, grade, which stands for United States Pharmacopeia, which is a nonprofit organization that sets quality standards for drugs, food ingredients, and healthcare products. They also claim their, to combine their methylene blue with gold nanoparticles, which aids absorption. And I also liked it didn't have formaldehyde in it and was GMO free. They also had a love it or return it guarantee. So we decided to try that brand. There's other brands available. You can research that yourself. I will also put a link below to the brand we used just because we got great results with my mom. Um, also below, we're going to be links to the scientific papers as well that I've mentioned in this recording. This recording, this video is my testimony um, and my mom's testimony. Please remember any type of treatment plan or supplement is not gonna work for everyone. I'm not a doctor, I'm not your doctor. If you use anything that I discuss, you're advised to consult with a physician or other licensed healthcare professional to see how it may or may not work for you. Also, when I do get more information um, on my mom's genetic testing, and when I see results from um, a time period of her being on the supplements he recommended, I will do a video on that as well. If you have questions in that meantime though, and, and you'd like to know more about that or any other thing, you can reach out to me. There's a contact form link down below. I also have an essential oil-based podcast. So I'm not used to doing YouTube and video. I am used to doing audio and podcasts. And um, I have, as on every about every podcast app there is, it's called the Oily Academy. We're getting close to 100,000 downloads. So that's exciting. Um, so you can find me there. So before you go though, if you could like and subscribe to my channel, it would really help my channel out, especially in these beginning days. I uh, really appreciate it. So thank you so much for watching and um, I'll see you next time here on the Natural Health Researcher YouTube channel.